Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Rob Klingberg, your host. What you're looking at here are the tufts on the left wing. We're out at Marina Beach on May the 17th and confirming that the flow conditions are as we want them over the Elevon, uh, a little more organized uh, now that we've got seals across the bottom, and also confirming the recent changes to the pilot's cage. And if conditions are absolutely perfect, uh, try a couple of so the wind was blowing about uh, 15 to 20 miles an hour. We're seeing that we're getting generally nice flow over the elevon, and the controls are precise for maneuvering the wing. Occasionally you'll see some turbulence near the winglet that could be separated flow. Um, we are running a Reynolds number of about 450,000 at uh, 20 miles an hour. Uh, so it is in an area where you can see separated flow occasionally. But overall, it was good. So here we have a still of uh, me getting ready for the second test top. Uh, we didn't get any video of the first one. That's okay. It wasn't much. Uh, second one is actually interesting. And uh, you'll s we have a 360 degree view camera set up here so that we can see my feet and the airspeed at the same time. Kind of distorts the picture a lot, but we just have to put up with that. I was more interested in the data rather than looking for pretty video. Uh, we found out that the takeoff speed is right about 23 miles an hour, and I was hoping for 21. I think I can get it down to 21 if I just deploy the flaps a little bit more. These are the first uh, flights that I've used the uh, pilot suspension system uh, that I designed originally, and it hooks me into the wing overhead, and it leaves me free to swing fore and aft. Uh, worked out really well, much better than the other methods I tried. Uh, there seemed to be no coupling between my body motion and the stick. Uh, it was very easy to control the aircraft. Uh, once the glider is up to about 25 miles an hour, the stick goes into a neutral position. She's really nice to fly. Very easy to hold a constant altitude, even when I'm just a few inches uh, above the ground. And uh, I was very happy with it. I think that uh, it's really ready to go for some serious towing and some uh, high free flights as soon as I get that reserve parachute set up. Helping me out today were uh, Stefan and Trey. Uh, they were just, they're local pilots, they're super, super helpful, shout out to them, thank you very much, wouldn't be possible without you, and you'll see them run alongside, and they have their hands on the pilot's cage, but they're not guiding the aircraft, uh, they're not actually gripping it tight, uh, just a, a loose hold, and they're there to push down on the nose when I say to stop the flight. Uh, there's a gentle slope there, and uh, with my L over D, I could have been out in the ocean uh, pretty quick. Uh, so they're just there to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, and this flight goes really fast. We're missing a few frames, which I'll explain later. So don't blink, and here we go. I'm, I'm just about ready here. The back one then. Again. Lifting. Okay. Nose coming up? No, he's doing the nose, then we do it. Alright. Oh, okay, hold it right there. Whoa, 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 too much roll. There you go. One, uh, soft. A okay. little higher, a little higher. Your right wheel is hitting the saw horse. Oh, okay. Yeah, saw horse out. Okay, now I'm flying. Good, good. Okay, let me bring the nose up a little. Yeah, yeah. Woo! I'd be flying. Yeah. I've got leg straps. Look at this. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I got down. you. Set her down. That was excellent. Nice. I had a good 30 foot glide there. Well, that went by really fast, didn't it? So I've uh, made a copy of that uh, flight and slowed it down by a factor of 10 so that uh, I can talk you through and tell you a little bit more about what's going on uh, during that very short but important hop. So let's take a look at that. So here we're starting out with the sawhorse is already removed and uh, everybody's getting in position and I start walking forward slowly. I didn't want to 
lunge into it and cause any weird pitch pitch changes because my shoulders are up uh, tight to those lift straps. And once Stefan and Trey are in place, uh, I'm ready to push a little harder. And I only have to add about five miles an hour to the speed of the aircraft to get it off the ground. And it's lifting my feet already here. And it appears that my legs are off to the side, but it's really not that much. A lot of that's due, distortion due to the camera. Here I'm up. My feet are off and we're gliding here. I'm flying the aircraft. The stick's in a neutral position. I touch a little bit and take one more stride uh, and level the wing out. And there you see I'm clear of the ground. We're flying normally. And right there you see the big transition, a uh, big jump. And that's where we're missing some frames due to how the camera operates. But here is the end of the flight where we're flying nice and straightforward and uh, steady height off of the ground and then I touch down and rather than doing a normal landing flare I actually push forward on the stick to dump all the lift and stick it on the ground and Trey and Stefan are holding the nose down and holding me back keep me from going forward but overall really smooth uh, flight uh, very easy to do uh, I would have been uh, perfectly comfortable without uh, the runners on the side. I could pop it off the ground and put it back down just about any time I wanted. Uh, but this was safer, and safer is always better. Uh, so in the flight, we saw that it's uh, doing about 25 miles an hour. You can go back and take a look at that if you like. Uh, I think that's probably minimum flight speed. Stall speed's down around 23 uh, with that flap setting. I think normal flight speed's going to be 30, 35 miles an hour. Uh, between thermals, you're probably going to fly a lot faster, 50, give or take. And I think if you're really making a fast run of it, I think this glider will easily cruise at uh, 60 or 70 miles an hour. v and &E is up around 100 miles an hour, so uh, this aircraft will really be able to move once you pull up the flaps. Uh, and uh, so, overall, just really thrilled with it. Uh, it was great fun and we're ready to move forward with uh, more exciting test flights and right now we're planning on uh, heading to El Mirage to do some towing with it. I have a different set of wheels now for that and uh, we'll be able to take it up to say 20 feet or so and I can do some uh, gentle S turns. Uh, we can uh, fly it up and release it and see how that goes and I can try some pitch excursions and maybe I'll have enough time to play with the flaps a little bit. We did note during ground handling at the beach that uh, the flaps are quite effective as expected. Uh, when I deploy full 90 degree flaps that would uh, pop the front of the pilot's cage up off the sawhorse uh, which is what I want. When the flaps go down, we want the nose to come up, so they're working as designed and about the uh, proper amount. Uh, so uh, it really looks like we've sorted it all out, have the right CG position, the right uh, pilot suspension methodology, and if I just get that uh, reserve parachute uh, components all integrated together, I think we're good to go for some pretty darn exciting flights. Uh, but let me tell you, I might have only been six inches off the ground, but this was really exciting to me. Uh, this is the first time I've handled the aircraft where it really flies uh, like a nice aircraft. Uh, it felt like um, a Schweitzer 126 is kind of what it flew like. Uh, pretty nice overall. I like it. And uh, if you're young enough or if you have a strong headwind, pretty easy to land. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what it lands like with full flaps. I think that's going to get it down to a speed where uh, just about anybody could handle getting it uh, on the back on the ground. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to land it with the flaps up, though. You'd be moving right along. Uh, so, uh, once again, I thank you for all your support. Uh, I love all of my patrons, and please hang in there with me. And I think we've got some really, really exciting stuff to come. Hey, welcome back to the shop. I hope you enjoyed that little clip of this glider flying with me on board, everything going perfectly. I can't tell you how thrilled I am by that seemingly innocent little ground skim over the sand dune. No, it doesn't look like much, but it was a huge deal because there were a number of unknowns that were answered in a couple of little hops down the sand dune. Unknowns that were going to make all the difference in the world of whether this is a viable aircraft or not. And now I'm, I have done the flights that prove it's ready to move forward and get on to the really exciting flying. Um, we've proven out 
uh, with those two little flights that it is pitch stable. It's not overly sensitive and there's no coupling between me swinging in the harness and moving the control stick. That's a very important thing. We know I have precise pitch control because I can keep it off the ground at say six inches or one foot accurately. And I know I have good enough roll control to keep the wings level. And we flew it in winds up to 20 miles an hour. So that's pretty amazing. All the other hang gliders were down. Nobody else was flying, but I could still fly this thing. So really, really great. Able to run, take off, fly flight, land it, all perfect. Now I'm ready to move forward and I'm getting the reserve parachute system installed. I have the second chance air deployed ballistic uh, system that pulls the chute out of the pack. That's going to be right over my head here. I want to build a little box to put this in. Um, and this will go up this way and it drags the chute out. It's connected to a little pilot chute at the apex of the main and uh, it should open quite rapidly. We'll be testing it several times before we commit to flight with it. Um, the uh, deployment handle is right here so all I have to do is reach up with my right hand pull straight down and that will deploy it uh, maybe I might not be here I might be somewhat over here if something bad's going on but I'll still be able to reach it and deploy it um, the whole thing is set up so it's right at the center of gravity location so I don't have to worry about adjusting anything else or guessing again where the right CG location is all taken care of um, so I'm very excited that uh, we're going to be uh, moving forward with the project. I had some doubts in there for a little while. Um, and in the long run, we'll get the parachute set up such that, let me get that out of the way. The parachute's actually going to go inside the wing up in here. And uh, I'll build a little tray, that uh, a box tray that goes inside the wing. I'll cut the top of the wing open, uh, remove the center rib bond that tray down in there and build a load ring, a carbon fiber load ring that goes around the opening. Uh, that'll carry the structural loads. And then there'll be a cover, probably a little thin polycarbonate cover, uh, such that when this system deploys, uh, it'll pull that cover open that's held in place with Velcro and out'll go the chute. So, so it'll be fared in perfectly, uh, no added drag from the parachute. Now there is this system, uh, and the parachute will be a little bit forward of the CG, so I'll probably move this aft back here to fire up this way, uh, and that'll be fine. That'll counterbalance the whole thing. In the long run, I'm going to search out uh, a rocket-deployed uh, uh, system. Uh, they're, not, they're made in Europe, but we can't get them here in the United States. Uh, but I think there's some substitutes in with a little bit of engineering and some test runs. Uh, I might be able to gem up my own system. But in the meantime, we're going to use this. So... This weekend, Saturday, we're going to head down to El Mirage and we're going to do a little bit of towing. We'll take it up to 20 or 30 feet. The system won't be ready for that yet, so we'll keep it low. Uh, and it'll give me a chance to do roll reversals. We'll, we'll tow it up a ways. I'll get off a tow, fly straight forward. Then I might just do a little turn to the right and back to the left and land straight. Uh, and then maybe on tow, if everything's going well, I'll do some roll reversals like this to make sure that I have sufficient uh, roll rates. And once we get all of that sorted out, we can either tow to higher altitude, can aero tow it, we could pay out winch tow it, or we can take it to the mountains and, and just launch off a regular hang glider site. Uh, no matter how you look at it, there's some pretty darn exciting flights coming up, and I, I can't wait to go do them. And that's where you come in. I need your help. Uh, you've if you've been following with, you've probably been with me for two or three years as I developed this whole design and built it and got into the test program. It's been a long road, and I need your help. And now's the time to help. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't worked since the COVID thing came on. I do consulting on the side, and I haven't been able to do that. Uh, so there's been no extra cash flow for me. And going out testing is very expensive. Uh, the trip to El Mirage... Uh, and back $500 easily, and most of that's in gas. And we're going to need to make several of these trips. Uh, so I am uh, politely but directly asking you to make donations. If you look down below, all you have to do is put your head down a little bit, and you see that heart-shaped thing like this. It says, super thanks. Please click on that. Look at the various donation levels. Pick one that you can afford. 
Uh, don't go over your means, but uh, if you have any ability at all to make a donation, please make a donation. Click on that heart, put a little bit of money in the pot so I can put gas in the truck and continue to develop this aircraft uh, because it, it's very difficult to uh, spend thousands and thousands of dollars without my wife getting mad at me. Um, and I need to bring in some money to help cover those costs. Uh, so I, I appreciate anything that you can donate and uh, be as generous as you can be, uh, but don't go beyond your means, of course. And I'll continue to produce these videos and put all that information out there that you can use on your own projects, and hopefully you'll find it a little bit entertaining. And we'll get this whole aircraft moved along, and maybe one day you could have one of your own. Uh, so uh, please consider a donation. Tell your friends. Maybe they'd like to donate. And... Uh, I'll get this thing ready for some really big flights. And in the meantime, as I always say, please fly safe and bye for now.